Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth as given to us by the Most High God. <coughs> All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, uh, to the saints that are watching in, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's go to John chapter 7, verse 14. This is John chapter 7, verse 14. <sighs> What color is the Kai, son? What color is his leg? What? Look again. Look at him again. What color is it? That's funny. He ain't no white boy. Stop putting that pressure on that boy. I'm supposed to say black boy. That's right. 100% Hebrew. I don't know, bro. You watch your mouth. <laughs> Pops look Nigerian. Oh, no. Nah. We ought to sit over here. All right. That's all. all right. Arkansas. <laughs> from Arkansas. Arkansas. All right. <laughs> well, we, we from Africa, though. You wasn't no slave. 100% Arkansas. You come from the Lees. <laughs> we know how y'all got here. Nah, my folks from Arkansas. <laughs> y'all got here on planes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my folks from Arkansas. Mom and dad. Chinatown. Arkansas. Nah. <laughs> they don't even got one. This is uh, John chapter... Uh, 7 verse 14. Now about the midst of the feast, Yahushua went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? All right, so they asked a the question. They said, They want to know. How in the world he know the scriptures and he never learned the scriptures? He never went to seminary. He never went to class, right? All right, he never studied around here. How, how in the world does he know the scriptures? Remember, other places in the book tell us that he taught it with authority. He said, He didn't teach like these other people be taught. He taught, he teaches it with authority. All right, keep going. Yahshua answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Mm -hmm. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He said, If you do the <clears throat> Most High's will, then you will know whether it be of God or whether he just talking. All right? And that's the same thing with any doctrine that comes to us. If we do the will of the Most High, then we'll understand whether that doctrine that comes to us is of God or not. Right? That's why it's important that we obey. That's why we come here and we try to understand what God's will is for our lives, what God's will is communicated through the book, and what we need to do stepping going forward and make sure we have that knowledge. Without the knowledge, without being able to retain this stuff in memory, then that means that we cannot be saved. Right? That's book. Right? It's letting us know anybody who's saved, you save by keeping this stuff in memory. Right? That's why we go over the same things. That's why we speak about the same things. It's important that we have this stuff in memory. Doesn't mean that you have to be able to quote the Bible, you know, verbatim or anything like that. But you have to be able to have these concepts and these principles in your mind to understand what wrong, what's wrong and what's right. Understand what Yahushua did for us and what he requires of us. Otherwise, we've missed the whole message of what the book is trying to tell us. So last week we were talking about Paul. We were talking about how um, Paul is is going through. Um, going through uh, some struggles on his way to Rome, right? And, and we talked a little bit about how sometimes the Most High God will preserve or he will harm people that are near you based off of the actions that you take or based off of you being a saint. Um, he'll put you in situations that will challenge you. He'll purge things away from you. He will, um, he will he, he'll just challenge you in every way that you can. So we're going to continue on from there. Um, at Acts chapter 27, verse 26. Acts chapter 27, verse 26. <clears throat> Let's 
how be it we must cast we must be cast upon a certain island but when the fourteenth night was come as we were driven up and down in Adria so you remember he's on the ship at this point they've been going through terrible uh, the book called it Tempest but terrible storms he spoke to uh, some of the, the, the people in authority on the ship and he let them know we gonna mess around and suffer all types of loss because y'all didn't listen to me I said we shouldn't have went off right then he came back and he told him now he was like listen you know what I'm saying? We gonna have to uh, we gonna have to be put in a position where we gonna have to we gonna have to uh, we gonna have to lose some people on the ship, right? But it won't be everybody. Let's keep reading. He gonna reiterate that that same idea. Remember, the Most High God had already spoke to him. An angel showed up to him, right? And so now they're kind of like going forward because they're kind of stuck in the middle of the ocean. They just got to keep it moving at this point. But when the fourteenth night was come, as we were driven up and down in Adria, about midnight, the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country, and sounded and found it twenty fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, they sounded again and found it fifteen fathoms. Mm -hmm. Then fearing so this less, is like it's like what we think of radar, right? They have a sound, they drop it down, and then they wait for the time that it comes back to them in the water. That, the, that the, the noise bounces back to them in the water. It's kind of how radar works. What a radar does is send a signal out, and then the signal comes back, and that lets you know where things are in relation to where you are. And so it's the same thing. They're saying that they drop the sound, you know what I'm saying, and so many what they call fathoms come back, so it's letting us know this is so long away, right? This is something, and we're getting closer and closer because the sound is coming back at a, 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 at a, 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 a more, coming back more quickly. All right, so let's check it out. Then fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. Right, so as they see that, that the sound is coming back more quickly, they're looking like, well, if we keep going, they're in a boat. So remember, if you get too close to land, the bottom of the boat is going to hit the ground. And there's rocks down there and stuff. So they said they, they are scared that they'll be moving too quickly and then the boat will end up hitting the rocks. So they're like, okay, since the fathoms is coming back, since the sound is coming back, Let's throw an anchor out there because it seems like we're getting close. So they throw an anchor out, and let's see what happens now. This is Acts chapter 27, verse 27. And wish for the day, 30. And as the shipmen were about, as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea under color, as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship, Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, Except these abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. Right? So he was looking at, he was looking at, or let's say, let's deal with them first. So what they were looking at is this boat is moving real fast. It's dark. We can't see nothing. We, we sent the signal out. The signal came back to us. We know that we're moving quick, and we're moving quick towards some rocks. Right? So they were looking like, let's quickly throw an anchor out. They threw the anchor out. But now they're feeling like we're not going to stop in time. So they were about to abandon the ship. Because they thought they were about to crash. When they're doing that, Paul was looking at them like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Y'all cannot get out of the ship. Or else, y'all not going to live. Because remember, the book told them, or the most, the most high God told them by the, by the uh, mouth of an angel, he said, anybody that's with you will be saved. Right? He said, I get every, I've given you everybody who's with you. Right? So they will be saved. So they're about to get out of the ship. He's like, no, 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 no. You're going to have to stay in here, right? So he made sure he let them know that, right? That's, that's similar. When we look at this, it reminds us of, of uh, well, what does it remind us of? Like Jonah? Jo yeah, it's kind of like the opposite of Jonah, right? Jonah, get your butt out of the ship, you know what I'm saying, yeah. or else that thing going down. Uh, but uh, it also uh, reminds us. Y'all sure abiding in him? Definitely, definitely, yes, absolutely. It definitely reminds us of, uh, of abiding in Yahushua. Sure. Um, but it also reminds us of Noah, right? Because right. everything, everybody who lived inside of that ship, they, uh, they lived. You know what I'm saying? Everybody who was in the ship lived. All the animals had to be in the ship. Anything outside of the ship, that thing got flooded away, right? So that's how the Most High God works. He gives you an instruction, and he gives you a safe place. You know what I'm saying? Just like the brother, he mentioned, you know what I'm saying, abiding in Yahushua. You know what I'm saying? When we abide in Yahushua, you kind of imagine it as like a circle. You know what I'm saying? Like a ring. You know what I'm saying? And so 
you are within it. If you're within it, it's safe. Everything outside of it, just like the sanctuary cities, right? The sanctuary mm -hmm. cities, if you go go to uh, Joshua chapter um, chapter 20, uh, chapter 20, Joshua chapter 20, verse 1. Ain't even a real thing now. Thank you, baby. Chapter 20, verse 8. <clears throat> verse 1. It's Joshua chapter 20, verse 1. Can you turn that TV down a little bit, too? The Lord also spake unto Joshua, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, Appoint out for your cities of refuge, whereof I spake unto you by the hand of Moses. All right, so Moses already commanded us. He said, when y'all get into the land, make cities of refuge. Joshua's going to tell us why. <laughs> that the slayer that kills any person unawares and unwittingly may flee there. And they shall be your refuge from the avenger of blood. And when he that does flee unto one of those cities shall stand at the entering of the gate of the city... And shall declare his cause in the ears of the elders of that city. And they shall take him into the city unto them. And give him a place that he may dwell among them. Right. And, so, if, <clears throat> oh, go ahead. and if the avenger of blood pursue after him. Then they shall not deliver the slayer up into his hand. Because he smote his neighbor unwittingly. And hated him not before time. Right. So we look at it. The city of refuge was put in place to protect a person. Who accidentally killed somebody. Right. So the example was given, I'm chopping down a tree, and while I'm chopping down the tree, the uh, the head of my axe, it flies off and it hits somebody in the head and kills them, right? I would then be, be considered a manslayer, right? At that point, I would have to escape. I would have to run to this city. I would have to explain my cause and be like, listen, this guy died. It wasn't my fault, or maybe it was my fault, but it was a complete accident. I really didn't hate him. It wasn't any animus towards him. You know what I'm saying? Can y'all store me here? So then I would have to be stored there, and the people of that city would have to kind of stick up for me and make sure that nobody touches me, right? But it, essentially what it is is it's a type of jail, right? It's a type of prison for me, right? Because I have to stay there in that city until, until, uh, the, it, until one, um, the high priest dies, right? Or until I just choose to walk out. And I will sit there until I'm judged before all the congregation. Keep going. <clears throat> and if the avenger of blood pursue after him, then they shall not deliver the slayer up into his hand, mm -hmm. because he smote his neighbor unwittingly and hated him not before time. Right? So I'm constrained by this city. If I go outside, well, go ahead. Let's see. And he shall dwell in that city until he stand before the congregation for judgment and until the death of the high priest that shall be in those days. Then shall the slayer return and come up into his own city and unto his own house, unto the city from where he fled. Right? So I had to stay in this city. So I'm constrained by that. I'm constrained by this city. In another place, it'll let us know, if you go outside of that city, and the Avenger of Blood get your butt, ain't no blood on the Avengers of Blood hand. Right? They don't commit that. They're not charged with murder at that point. If they kill you and you outside of the city, they're not charging murder. What they did was completely legal. Right? But if you're within that city... You're protected. The people of that city have to protect you. The high priest has to protect you. Right? That's what Yahushua is for us. He's our high priest. So, right now, we're all considered manslayers. Right? And now, what we need to do is we need to escape and be within Yahushua. Once we're in Yahushua, then we're protected by him until he dies. But he lives forever. So that means we are forever with him, abiding in him. That's what it all comes down to. That's what he's talking about. We, let's go to John chapter 15. John chapter 15, verse 1. <laughs> It 
This is John chapter 15, verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Mm -hmm. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bring forth more fruit. Mm -hmm. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Mm -hmm. Abide in me, and I in you. He said, do what in him? <clears throat> Abide in me, and I in you. Abide, in this sense, means remain. He's just saying, stay in me. Right? Stay within me, and then I'll be within you. All right, let's see. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. Mm -hmm. No more can you accept ye be abide in me. Mm -hmm. Ye abide in me. He said that you'll be productive if you're in me. If you're not in me, you won't be productive. If you're not productive, he already told you at the beginning, he's going to cut you away and toss you in the fire. Right, read it again. We might have missed it. This is verse 1. He said, I'm the true vine. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. Okay. Prunes it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So if, he, if, it, if, if it produces some fruit, he'll prune it, which means he cleans it, right? He's going to clean it, and then it'll produce more fruit. Let's see what he say next. Uh, everyone that doesn't produce fruit, he takes it away. So let's, let's look at it. Now you are clean through the word which I've spoken unto you. So now he's telling you, at this point, you are clean. You're pruned. Right? What's next? Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. So if you want to continue to remain productive and therefore not be taken away, you have to abide in me. Let's hear what happens if you don't abide in me. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, mm -hmm. except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. Okay. I am the vine, you are the branches. Mm -hmm. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. Mm -hmm. For without me you can do nothing. Okay. If a man abide not in me, he if is... If he don't abide in me... <laughs> he is cast forth as a branch. He's cast forth as a branch. And is withered. And is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Your butt going to hell. If you don't abide in him, you're going to hell. It's just like the city of refuge. It's just like the ship that Paul is in. He's letting you know, if y'all don't stay in this ship, y'all going to die. Most High God already told Paul, everybody who's with you, you got them. And what, what happens is they can look at that and be like, no matter what, we're going to live. This is how Christians look at it. Because they look at it and they see the book. Book say, man, if you believe in it name of Jesus Christ and that he died on the cross for your sins, you saved. So they look at that and they be like, oh, cool. Well, then I'm saved. I can make a mistake every now and again. Because God understands, right? That's the reason why he died on the cross for my sins. I can make a mistake every now and again, right? I don't have to. I mean, sure, I'm supposed to do what God say, but I mean, who's nobody's perfect, right? How can I do it? And so they take that attitude and they get to doing things outside of him. They get to doing things that, that cause them to not abide in him. And they don't think it's an issue because he, they think that I've already been told I'm saved. Right? Jesus died for me when I was a sinner still. Books say that. While we were yet sinners. Right? So he's looking like, well, he died for me. I was a sinner. Therefore, I'm already saved. If I'm already saved, then it doesn't really matter that much what I do. So if you look at it, the people on the ship may have been thinking the same way. Paul already told them, everybody here, y'all good, because God told me he's going to give me everybody who with me. Well, we with you, Paul. We were with you. Now we're about to hop off, this book, uh, off, off, off of this ship. Paul letting them know, if you get off of the ship, you're going to die. Because at that point, you're no longer, now you lost your position. You're outside of the ship. You're no longer with that protection. He said, you got to stay in here until the time is right. Right? That's what we have to look at. We have to stay inside of Yahushua. We can't, because we've been inside of Yahushua at one point, or we think we've been inside of Yahushua at one point, now we can step out because we're good. Right? We've been in there, so now it's free. Now we have free reign. It doesn't work that way. You can't tiptoe in and out of them either. If you get caught out of them, you're done. If you die and you're not inside of Yahushua, that's it. Right? Your dying day, you have to be in them. And the book already tells us nobody, nobody know how, who, who can look and tell us how much life you got left. So you can't sit here and try to plan it out like I'm probably going to die in three years. So 
I'll wait and I'll wait for a year or two before I really start getting it right. You make a fool out of yourself. He gonna make a fool out of you a couple ways. He either gonna he either gonna put it on your hard work. In two years, you still ain't gonna have the discipline to do it because now you built up so much discipline to doing the wrong thing. Or your budget's not gonna have two years. Your budget's not gonna have three years. Right? It's too many ways that he can get us. Blind you so that you can't come back. That's too easy. Too easy, and we don't even understand it. He mess around and take our way, our willingness to even be right away. Right? He'll take he'll take away our sight for the right way. We can't even see it. He'll blind us to what the right thing is. We'll think we're doing the right thing. We'll think we change. And we find out we're not doing the right thing on the on the day of judgment, which is too late. Keep going. He said, abide in me. He said, if you don't abide in me, your butt getting thrown to the fire. What up? If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. That's a good deal. <coughs> you ask me. He said, all you got to do is abide in me. You ask what you want, and it'll be done. You got to do no naming, darn claiming. He said, you just ask what you want, and it'll be done. Guess what you do? You got to abide. Well, what does that mean? What does it mean to abide in you, Yahushua? I don't know what he could be saying that. Here and is my father glorified that you bear much fruit. He said, you, you want to know how you can glorify the father? Bear much fruit. Based off of what we just read, how do you bear much fruit to you? You got to abide in the Messiah. So based off of what we just read, the only way to bear a lot of fruit is to abide in the Messiah. So I just got one question. What does it mean to abide in the Messiah? Let's see. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Mm -hmm. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Mm -hmm. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. He said, if you do what? If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as Why I... Why don't teach us this stuff? I don't know. It's right here? It don't, it don't sound as good when you throw commandments in there? Something, it's just something about when you hear a commandment, it's just people just like get uncomfortable or something. While we can't know, we've heard abide in Jesus, right? We've heard remain in Jesus. We've heard remain in Jesus' love. We heard all this stuff in church, right? Why they never told us to keep his commandments? He just told you, if you keep my commandments, then you abide in me. He told us earlier, if you abide in me, you produce much fruit. He told us a little later, if you produce much hearing and how my father is glory, the only way you're glorifying the father is by producing much fruit. Hearing is how they know you're my what? Disciple. Not none of this other stuff that the people run their mouth about. You know that you're a disciple because you bear much fruit. How do you bear much fruit? You abide in the Messiah. How do you know you're abiding in the Messiah? Because you keep the commandments. All right here in one chapter. We ain't even through the whole chapter. He'll let us know this is how you abide. How do you abide? How do you remain in the ship if you were Paul? You don't go jump over the ledge. That's a pure instruction. You keep yourself right here. Right? The same way with us. If you do these things or don't do these things according to his commandments, then you will be remaining. These are instructions to keep you within. If you're within, you're safe. Right? These are the things that say for us. Let's go to 1 John chapter 2. I just want to make sure this whole idea is like throughout the whole book. book. I don't want to take nothing out of context. This 1 John chapter 2. You can give me verse 1. Everybody look at the Bible and act like it's darn blues clues or something. You can't find, so all you got to do is read it. Well, you know, you, you know the Bible. So you think about the Bible and the reason why it's such a wonderful book is because God can speak to anybody in a different way. Well, now you better cut that out. You can't speak to nobody. You can only speak to people. You can speak to your darn self. What's wrong with the EPA? Speaking to themselves. They look at the book and they take what they want to take out of it. They look at one verse. One verse, abide in me, and they just take that to whatever they want to mean. Abide in this love. Right? That just means you just got to love God. Okay, that's cool. How do you love him? You love him just like, I mean, when you love your dad, 
You know, you don't always do exactly what your dad say, but you still love him. You got to love God. That's what he is to you. You're a father. Uh-huh. That's right. Books say honor your mother and your father. That's where you messed up. So now your whole love, your whole love for your father been based off of dishonor, and now you're trying to play, place God about your messed up relationship with your dad. He's trying to place God in that. Everything that we've done been defined wrong. And then we use improper definition to try to understand the book. It's important for us to get back to the basics of what the book is saying as intended and just walk in it. No excuses, just walk in it. This is 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. That, that you sin a little bit? That you sin not. He said that you don't sin. What did he say next? Did they love this one though. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with See, the I Father. See, I told you, it's impossible to stop sinning. Everybody said it just now. It's impossible. He said, I wrote this, so you said not. Then they said, if anybody sin, of course people going to say it's impossible. Is that what he said? No. He said, I wrote this to you. For what reason? That you sin not. But. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Yahushua, the Messiah, the righteous. Mm -hmm. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. So how do you know you know him? If we keep his commandments. You can get the running your mouth all you want. He's letting you very he letting you know very clearly. The reason I'm writing this on to you is because I don't want you to sin. However, if you do sin, I want you to know we do have an advocate. He's a propitiation. He's a sacrifice for our sins. And not just us, he's a sacrifice for the whole world. Even these sinners out here don't care nothing about him. Right? He the sacrifice for the entire world. I want you to understand that. But we have an advocate if we want to turn from sin. Right? He said, but the, my purpose of writing this on to you is that you don't sin. Now, let me make sure you understand. Right? After he said that, let me make sure you understand. If you think you know the man, then you better be keeping his commandments. If you don't keep his commandments, you don't know the man is what he's trying to tell you. Keep going. He that says I know him and keeps not his commandments is a liar. You be the truth lying. is not in him. He said, ain't no truth in you. Keep going. But whoso keeps his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Mm -hmm. Hereby we know we that, hereby, hereby know we that we are in him. How do we know that we're where? In him. Abiding in him. How do we know that we're abiding in him, John? He, he that says he abides in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. So we have to live just like Yahushua. Right? Yahushua was what? Blameless. So if the man was righteous, he was blameless. And we got to walk as he walked. That means that we got to be walking righteously and blamelessly. Right? It's, it's, it's clear when you look at it in the book and you just take it for what he said. When you play voodoo with it and you try to, you know what I'm saying? Oh, well, see... My Christian pastor told me that this is how we should look at it. And so now I have to look at the text and try to make it fit the way I've understood it all my life. That's when it becomes confusing and difficult. That's when you look at the Bible and be like, well, technically you can look at it in any way. Of course you can look at it in any way. Because every time I'm looking at it, I'm trying to look at it through a Catholic view. And when you're looking at it, you're looking at it through a Baptist view. So Baptist is going to teach you that. There's a trinity, and I don't know what they teach. I don't know the, all these people. But they're going to teach you their particular doctrine. So when you look at these verses, you have to try to make them squeeze and fit and interpret them based off of what you've already been taught. So, of course, everybody's going to look at the Bible and look at it differently. However, if you get rid of all that junk and you just say, what is this thing saying? And does it contradict it somewhere else if I believed it as this? If I believe it as this man telling me if I see it, I'm going to hell, tell me what Bible verse that contradicts. Not one of them. It fits the Bible perfectly. If you sin, you're going to hell. No matter what you read in the Bible, that makes sense. It's when you get to going off on all this other stuff is when it stops making sense. That's when it stop, starts getting confusing because there's lies mixed in. He told you, if you don't keep his commandments and you say you know the man, you are a liar. That's not me talking. That's the book. So now when I say it, People will look at me like I'm judgmental and I'm saying it. But in actuality, God has already judged that scenario. I'm not judging anything. I'm just telling you what the man said. I'm repeating what the man, I'm standing on what the man said because I believe it. Let's go to 2 John. This 2 John verse, uh, uh, 
verse 6. 2 John, verse 6. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment, that as ye have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. Mm -hmm. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Yahushua, the Messiah, is coming to the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. I wonder what you got to do with these people. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresses and abides not in the doctrine of the Messiah has not God. So if you do not abide, if you don't remain in the doctrine of the Messiah, you do not have who? God. Period. That's not me talking this stuff. We already know what abiding in the doctrine of the Messiah is. That's keeping the commandments. So if you don't remain in the teaching of the Messiah, then you don't have God. What else? He that abides in the doctrine of the Messiah, he has both the Father and the Son. He said, but if you do it, you have both the Father and the Son. Let me, what do you do with somebody who comes come and saying something different? What? Let's see. Keep reading. Uh, if there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. He said, if anybody come to you teaching something different, don't even receive him into your house. Matter of fact, bid him Godspeed. I mean, don't bid them Godspeed. Right? We have to look at the seriousness. At this point, everybody is teaching something different. At this point, you can't let nobody in your house. Everybody is teaching stuff different. Right? All these people teaching stuff different. He said, they he said, they come with something different. Don't you believe it? Let them people in your darn house. Don't bid them no darn Godspeed. They saying something different than this. Yeah, kick they butt out the house. You be like, oh, well, yeah, all right, whatever. Don't even tell them have a nice day is what he tells them. He, mm, all right, bye. These people think you rude. They, they tell us that this stuff is rude. This from our book. I'm fine with it. Some people, there, some people don't like, you know what I'm saying, the book, the book will say certain things, like, it's certain things in the book that's not politically correct in terms of these people. It's like, the, when the book tell you, like, the value, the, the, the value of a man, the value of a, a a woman and the value of a child. You know what I'm saying? If, when you, when it comes time, our law, when it comes time for us to redeem a man versus to redeem a woman, you know what I'm saying? I think a, a man is like 30 shekels. You know what I'm saying? A woman is like, you know, something like 20 shekels. Then a child is like, you know what I'm saying, like 15 shekels or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, well, why is the man valued higher than the woman? You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, that stuff is uncomfortable for them, so they got to come up with some reasoning and just be like, you know, well, it's not that this and this, that, and other, and just try to make excuses for God. Me, I'm good with it. I'm fine with it. Uh -huh. That's just what God say. God say, when you redeem them in this scenario, this is how much I want. What I'm going to do? What I'm going to do with that? I'm fine with that. I'm good with that. And this, yeah, it may seem rude. Somebody knock on your door, they ask, and they come in, talk to you about God. Yeah, it might seem rude to be like, nah, you can't come in my house. That thing might, it might, it's rude. By our standards, that's rude. You know what I'm saying? Then you just tell them, they be like, all right, well, uh, whatever. Have a good day then. You be like, bye. You know what I'm saying? Because I can't even tell you have a good, according to the book, I can't even tell you have a good day. I got to be like, bye. Right? That thing might feel rude to a lot of people. I'm good with that, though. I'm not making no apologies. I'm not sitting here trying to defend God. What I look like trying to defend God? If I'm going to defend God, I'm defending on what he said. I'm not defending them past what he said. I'm not sitting here coming up with something. Well, the only reason that we're doing that is because really, it's not that it's not loving. And it's, I, ain't got, I ain't got no talk about This is what it said. Period. That's how he say handle it. And I, me personally, I think it's the wisest way to handle it. <laughs> Do you understand? Nope. I don't understand a bit of it. <laughs> it was, they came to my house trying to say God was a, was a woman. I was like, yeah, I'll see y'all later, man. That's it. Yep. Try to tell him that he wasn't. Woman, huh? Well, all right. You can head that way. You know what I'm saying? You can head that way. I'm about to go ahead and go in this kitchen. You know what I'm saying? You be all right. You know what I'm saying? You be all right. All right. See you later. Right? We don't. 
We don't have time to play with. That's how all of this stuff, because of compromise. We make compromise and compromise and compromise. And that's how this stuff creeps in and our people get dumbed down, <laughs> believing whatever. Believing we Egyptians. Believing we, 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 we Africans. Or, you know what I'm saying, some random African. You know what I'm saying? Believing, believing every Mexican and Latino and, and Japanese person, anybody who ain't white is an Israelite. People over in Guam and people over in uh, the Philippines and people over in, people over in uh, the Hawaiians and all that. All of them Israelites. The Indians. All of them Israelites. Everybody a darn Israelite. We believe this stuff. They got up charts. You know what I'm saying? Hanging up charts. We, we believe this. This stuff make a whole lot of sense to us. That thing don't make no sense. But we can believe it because we've compromised on so much, our brains don't even work properly. No compromise. And I'm not about to feel bad about it. Well, the book say. Well, you know, if that's why I don't believe that book. All right. Cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 trust me. I mean, I get it. I that's understand. like the best answer ever, bro. Don't right? I, that thing, I get yeah, it. I understand. That like, thing, that thing, rough. That's a deal breaker for you. I get it. You know what I'm saying? If you don't believe it, that's cool with me. You know, no way don't. I can serve a god that mm. devalues women. I get. Listen, I get it. Like I get it. I understand. You know what I'm saying? You don't. I understand. Don't try to act like I mean, you have people in our book. Jacob had his condition. Jacob, when Jacob spoke to God, he told him, "Look, listen. As long as you give me raiment and food, you'll be my god." He had his darn condition. Let some food not come off the table. It was liable to... Jacob be like, listen, you know what I'm saying? We good. You know what I'm saying? Everybody get mad at Esau because he started his birthright. Jacob's, uh, Jacob laid it out very clearly. Raymond and food guy. As long as, you, as long as you keep me fed and put clothes on my back, we good. You'll be my God. It's all right. People got their conditions. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You can't try to convince people. No, you should serve a God that devalues women. Right? That says that a woman's value when redeeming is less than a man's value when redeeming. You should serve that guy. I ain't going to try to make you serve. I understand. I get it. I, I, I feel you. Like There's certain things that are deal breakers for some people. I might have a deal breaker too. I don't know what it is. I couldn't come to I can't. I couldn't come to God you know what I'm saying, and be like, this is my deal breaker. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I just believe the book. I roll with it. You know what I'm saying? That thing in it. That thing, everything yeah, I've seen in it, that thing ain't been righteous yeah, to me. That thing looks good to me. And if it, don't, oh, if it don't look good to me, that ain't my call. I still got to do it. I, damn thing. Work. I ain't seen nothing in the book I can't work with. You know what I'm saying? I said, whole thing, I can do that. You know what I'm saying? We good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, think, I don't really know about that guy, but I trust you. We good. Right. You know what I'm saying? I think, what I'm going to do, I ain't about to sit here and argue on y'all behalf. Stuff don't bother me. Like that marriage stuff is like, bro, we was, I was not sure about that for a minute. I was like, you know what I'm saying? It don't matter because I ain't getting no divorce. <laughs> what I'm going to do? <laughs> Forget that. I just don't like when people try to make it seem like, you know, it's not saying what it's saying. It's like just say you don't believe it, and so that's this it. conversation can be over. That's it. If yeah. you do that, a lot of things will be more clear. Yeah. But that's how you get these different interpretations, because really you don't believe it. Yeah. Really you don't believe what it's and, saying, and, so you're making it say something different. And they wanna they wanna make it seem like they believe it when they really don't. So they. Yeah. Make sure these people know it's okay not to believe. Everybody ain't got a darn believe you good. Everybody's scared of being told them they're going to hell. Because they know somebody know this thing real. Yeah. That's why they don't want to be told that thing out loud. They still going to go. They just don't want everybody to know they're going. All right? That thing is uncomfortable for people. All right? Grab me, uh, grab me 2 Corinthians. Yeah, they know it's real. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Some of them do for sure. There's a whole lot of them that know it's real. Some of them do for sure. They just be hoping that it ain't sticking to everything, hoping, holding on to anything. You know what I'm saying? And give them a little hope that it might not be real. They know it's real. They got to know. They got to know something. Something out here. A whole lot of coincidences. Second Corinthians what? It's Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse For the love of for the love of the Messiah constrains us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Right. So we saying the love of the Messiah. We already know that the Messiah said, "Remain in my love." Right. So he's now this is Paul telling us he's saying the love of the Messiah. 
that thing constrains us. It keeps us, right? It keeps me from going out and doing too much. He said the love of the Messiah constrains us because we've judged that if one dead, if one died, all are dead. Right? Keep going. But we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Right? That's what the, it's verses like this. That's what the Mormons, you got Mormons, what they do is they baptize people for dead people. Right? So like, say my great grandmother is dead. When I get baptized, I'm going to be baptized multiple times, once for myself, once for my grandmother who was never baptized, my great-grandmother who was never baptized, but she's dead already, right? Because they look at a verse, and uh, we ain't got to get it, but uh, I think it's 1 Corinthians 15, where it said, why are, the, why are they baptized for the dead if the dead be not risen, right? So it's like, why are they baptized for the dead? And so they take that, and they look at it and be like, well, baptized for the dead? That means that we should be baptizing people for dead people, right? Make a fool out of themselves. Not realizing that what Paul is trying to say, and he's saying it here, is that if one died for all, all are dead. He's saying that we all dead. So when you get baptized, you're baptizing for your death, right? Because you want to live again. You're being baptized into death. That's what it represents, right? And that's what he's talking about by saying being baptized for the dead. But when you don't have, when you're looking at it and you're saying, I have Mormon doctrine, when I look at the Bible, I want to get that out of it, you'll just make a mess. You'll see what you want to see, right? That way, one verse shapes an entire practice, right? There's no consistency. There's no uh, examples of this practice anywhere in the book. But you can just take that one verse and do whatever you want to do with it because they don't have any discipline. They're not disciples. They're not bearing much fruit. They're not keeping the commandments. They just do what they want to do, right? That's what we have to get out of. Too many traditions are being built. That's how you get Sunday worship. That's how you get Christmas. That's how you get all these silly things. That's how you get baptizing people for dead people. What type of silliness is that? Keep going. And that he died for all, that they which live should, should henceforth live unto themselves, should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Mm -hmm. That's why from here on out know we no man after the flesh. He said that, that's why from here on out we don't know anybody after the flesh. All right, keep going. Yea, though we have known the Messiah after the flesh, yet now from here on out know we him, know we him no more. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if any man be in the Messiah, he if is a new creature. any man be in the Messiah, he's a what? New creature. He is a new creature. What happened to the other stuff? Old things are passed away. Old things are gone. Got to get rid of them. What else? Behold, all things are new. You got to get rid of the old stuff. When you, in, when you abide in the Messiah, what do you, when, when we started out, when we read first, or, uh, John 15, he said, if you produce a little bit of fruit, what are you going to do to you? I'll prune it. He gonna clean you up. So if he cleaning you up, what do you think? So if you take a plant and you prune in a branch on the plant, what do you think that consists of? You gonna chop off the leaves? You gonna take some leaves? Man, this leaf ain't really growing right. Let me get that one off of there. Oh, oh, I see a little twig coming off of there. Let me get that out of there. You taking away anything that's not productive and getting it away, clean it up to make sure that the plant is completely one hundred percent productive the way you want it to be. Right? That's what it is. You cleaning it up. That's what he said now. He said, when we become in it, when we abide in him, all old things are gone. He's pruned that away. He's taken that stuff away from us. Right? That's what makes us new. Matter of fact, go back to, uh, go back to uh, Acts chapter 27. Watch this. It's Acts chapter 27. I think we left off, what, verse 30? Verse 31. Verse 31 is Acts chapter 27, verse 31. So just to recap, Paul's in the boat. Things start getting a little hectic. They start realizing that we're about to hit some rocks. They got scared. They threw out an anchor. They thought this boat ain't going to slow down fast enough. We're about to jump out before we hit these rocks and we all die. Some of them tried to jump out. Paul went up to them. 
he is like, oh, hold on, right? Angel already spoke to me and said, everybody who with me going to live. But if y'all jump out of this darn boat, y'all done, right? So he told him, don't jump out of the boat. This is verse 31. Acts chapter 27, verse 31. Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. He said, you got to abide in the ship. Otherwise, you will not be what? Saved. If we don't abide in Yahushua, we won't be what? Saved. Period. What do you think this is about? You think this is about Paul being in the ship? This is about Yahushua. It's always going to be about Yahushua. Right? Keep going. Then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let her fall off. Mm -hmm. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them to take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that, I, that ye have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, I pray you to take some meat, for this is for your health. For there shall not a hair fall from the head of any of you. And so he, he gave them all. He, he had them all full. They didn't eat for like, they didn't eat for two weeks. He is like, man, y'all been good. Y'all fast for these two weeks. He's like, go ahead and eat. You know what I'm saying? They ain't ready to get off that darn boat. Right? But Paul told them not to, and they, they listened to him. Right? They remained inside of the boat. They abided. Watch this. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Right? So they broke bread, and they all started to eat the bread. What did they do next? Then were they all of good cheer, and they also took some meat. Mm -hmm. And we were in all, we were in all in the ship, two hundred three score and sixteen souls. Uh huh. And when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and cast out the wheat into the sea. They did what to the ship? And when they eaten enough, they lightened the ship and cast out the wheat into the sea. What do you think it means when they say lighten the ship? They got all the supplies off. They got that stuff out of there, and they cast off what? the wheat into the sea. They had to lose some stuff. To him that gathered in much, had none left over, and to him that had little, had no lack. They had to lose something. The old things had to pass away. Right? When we come into the Messiah, we abide in him. Part of it is giving up stuff. Right. We we're told we're told a whole lot of things about the Messiah um, and about what we do and about how 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 what he offers us is a free gift. Even in the beginning. Right. We make sure that we phrase it properly to make sure people understand regarding the free gift. Right. We say this a gift given freely to all who obey him is how we we phrase it in the beginning. Because other, otherwise, people might misunderstand because the book does say free gift, right? The, the book does speak of a free gift. But is it free in the sense that you don't have to do anything? That's what they teach us, that you don't have to do anything for it. On the contrary, you have to do everything for it. You have to give up everything for it. Everything that the, the, the Most High, he requires your entire life. Don't let anybody lie to you and be like, this is just free God doesn't want anything in return. That's not true. He wants your entire life in return. This is Matthew chapter 13. Let's look at some parables. It's Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. Let's check out some parables. Because in the parables, what Yahushua is trying to do is he's trying to explain things in a one in a mysterious way and two in a way that those who do understand it's related to something that they do on the daily in some cases right so we look at it and this is Matthew chapter 13 verse 44 and look how he talks about the kingdom again the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field he says like treasure that's hid in the field the which when a man found he hides and for joy thereof goes and sells all that he has and buys that field so he he said the kingdom of heaven is like going into a field finding out it's a treasure in there but somebody else owned this field so he is like you hide it you know what I'm saying? let me go ahead and throw some dirt over this treasure rebury it whatever you got to do then you say man how much you want for this uh this field he said in order to buy that field you had to sell everything 
Let's see what it says. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in the field, the which when a man has found, he hides, and for joy thereof goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. He said sells all that he has. So if the kingdom of heaven is like somebody who has to sell everything they have to get what they want, how could you say that it's free? This is what Yahushua is saying. Yahushua is saying this is a free, I mean, yeah, we, we, we've been told that Jesus has given us a free gift. Right? Book said it too, and we'll we'll get to it. But Book is telling he gets a free gift. Then on the other hand, Yahushua was saying it's just like a man who had to sell everything just to get it. That sound free? I don't know. Let's keep going. Let's look at the next verse. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. Uh huh. Who, when he had found one pearl of a great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Uh huh. So he sold. Everything again just to buy one darn pearl. Then how is that free if you have to sell everything that you have to get just to buy a pearl? If you're buying something, it's not free. But it's not just not free. You have to sell everything. That's what he's saying. He's saying the kingdom is like somebody who has to sell everything in order to get it. So how does this, at this point, you look at it if you're a Christian because you've been taught it a certain way, you're going to look, this is a contradiction. Not so. This is uh, Luke chapter 14. This is Luke chapter 14. Let's see what else you have to give up. You have to suffer loss. Right? Paul told him. He told him at the very beginning of the voyage. We read it last week. He said, I perceive that we will suffer much loss because y'all didn't listen to me in the beginning. He said, I perceive that we're going to suffer much loss, right? He even thought it was going to be light. And the angel came to him later. It was like, uh, everybody who with you, they're going to live. They're going to be good, right? So he told him, all right, we all going to be good, but we still going to suffer loss. Come down to it. They're about to jump off the boat. If you jump off the boat, your butt ain't going to be good no more. You only save if you're on the boat until the time is right to get off of the boat, all right? So he let them know that. They're like, all right, cool. Stayed on the boat. But then they still had to lighten up the ship. And they had thrown stuff on. We missed it before. But they had already thrown some stuff off of the boat. They throwing more stuff. It's important that old things pass away, that we have to get rid of stuff. Right? This stuff, we can look at this and we can, we can say, okay, this is, about, this is about Paul. This is about Yahushua. This is the message of Yahushua trying to show us that we have to remain in him. All this is biblical principle. Right? We look at it. Keep going. Or right, where we at? Matthew. Uh, this is Matthew. No, nah, we should be Luke chapter 14, verse 25. Luke 14. Verse 25. There went great multitudes with him and turned and said unto them, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me, Hate not his father he and said, mother. You have to hate your father and your mother. And wife. And your wife. And children. And your children. And brethren. And your brother. And sisters. And your sister. Yes, in his own life also. And you got to hate your own life. He that sounds like you got to give up what? Everything. I don't know where they... How it's free if you got to give up your whole... Everybody, your family. And at the end of it, you got to hate your own life too. How is it free at that point? He cannot be my disciple. He said, if you don't do that, you can't be a... I, it's, no, it's no stipulations. There's no requirements to being a Christian. That's why this stuff don't hit Christian. Ain't nothing in here written to a Christian. There's no promise delivered for a Christian. There's nothing, there's nothing good in the book. Or yeah, nothing, you know, really can't even say nothing bad in the book related to a Christian. Right? Only thing that's bad is relating to somebody who's not a disciple. A Christian, by default, would not be a disciple. Unless they are a disciple, right? But you being a Christian or not being a Christian in itself means absolutely nothing to anything in this book. What means something is, are you in the Messiah or are you out of Messiah? If you abide in the Messiah, then you bear much fruit. Herein is the Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. And this is how people know that you are a disciple. So if you are in the Messiah, that makes you a disciple. If you are a disciple, then you have stipulation to it. But there's promises given to a disciple. You're a disciple, you got something coming. 
right? You're a Christian, that means absolutely nothing in itself. You can be a Christian if you want to be a Christian, that's fine. Are you a disciple, though? Right? At the end of the day, are you a disciple? If you're a Baptist, you're going to hell. You're a Catholic, you're going to hell. Right? You're a Pentecostal, you're, a, you're any of these things. Even if you put non-denominational in front of your stuff, you're going to darn hell. Only thing you should be calling yourself is a disciple, a saint, any of these things. Not sectioning yourself off apart from the rest of the saints. There's no sense in doing it. If you section yourself and count yourself as different from the rest of the saints, for whatever reason, that makes you a sinner. I don't care what none of these people tell you. A lot of the stuff that they owe, they just don't understand the words. When the book tells us about heresies, that's what it's telling you about. Denomination. Don't think it's talking... It's not necessarily saying false doctrine, even though false doctrine tends to go with heresies, right? Denomination. The denomination tends to have false doctrine with it, and that's why they're associated. But when you read heresies, when people talk about that's a heresy, it is, that's not the proper usage of the word. Heresies is talking about a group, right? That means that I have counted myself separate from the rest of these, the, the rest of these uh, Christians or the rest of these disciples or the rest of these Muslims or the rest of these whatever. I count myself different now. Well, as soon as you do that, you're a sinner, right? As soon as you say you're something different other than what the Most High God has called you to be, you are a sinner at that point, right? Keep going. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Uh-huh. If you intending to build a tower, sit not down first and count the cost, whether you have sufficient to finish it. Lest happily after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him. Right? He's like, just make sure you're ready. He's trying to, he stopped. You guys have to understand the picture of what, what just happened. If we look at the context of what's going on, people are following the man. He stops and he sees people following. These, are, these would be by definition Christians. Christians. Because they call him Christ. Right? And then they were following him. So followers of Christ. So he stops them and he's like, hold on, hold on, hold on. I just want y'all to know, y'all gonna hate that. Have to hate your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your wife, your children, and even yourself, right? Even your own life, if you want to follow me. So it's, he turned around. These people just happily follow, following him. He if stopped you be my disciple, and give him what I said. Follow me. Oh yeah, if you want to be my disciple, you right, right? He stopped, turned them, and he's like, listen, let me make sure y'all understand what y'all doing what y'all getting into, what I require, right? He's giving them full disclosure. Listen, this is what you have to be willing to do. If you want to be a disciple of mine, right? If y'all just want to follow and just do what you want to do for sure, I ain't, got, I ain't got nothing to say to you. But if you want to be a disciple of mine, this is what's required. Then he gave him a parable. He's like, just like a person trying to make a building, they don't want to start the building unless they know that they got everything that it takes to finish it. Otherwise, somebody going to mock them. They're going to laugh at them. He's telling you, make sure y'all got what it takes before y'all come after me. Do y'all have what it takes? I'm, I know y'all following me. Do you have what it takes to be a disciple of mine? Because this is what it takes. Watch what he say next. This is another parable he give them. Well, what king going to make war against another king sits not down first and consults whether he be able to put with 10,000 meet him that comes against him with 20,000? Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sends an embassage desires, and desires conditions of peace. Right? He said, what sense would it make to try to start a war with somebody? You don't care nothing about how many soldiers they got or how many you got. And then you get there and you start to see him like, oh, I don't think we're going to win this one. So halfway into it, now it's like, uh, oh, let's let's go ahead and uh let's go ahead and make peace. He said, that doesn't make sense. Why'd you start the war in the first place? He said, if you can't do it, just make peace in the beginning. Bow out in the beginning. The equivalent to that is don't even try to start following me. Live your life. Do what you want to do. Do you understand that people, if this happened today, people would see this as trying to dissuade or discourage people from following them? Somebody posted there talking about anything that's discouraging, right? Discouraging to, to people or, or that makes them feel down. That is a message of the devil. Do you understand that this would be a discouraging message? People are following you. They're just happy following you. And you turn around. Uh, 
Make sure you got what it takes now. This is, this is, you're going to have to give up your family now. Even yourself. Even your own life. You got to give up everything. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be like, you don't want to be. Listen, if you ain't got what it takes, just stay where you are. Right? Watch what he say next. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsakes not all that he has, he cannot be my disciple. He said you have to forsake what? All that you have. You have to give it all up. That's why they're throwing stuff out of the darn boat. It's just there and they eat and they like, man, let's keep on getting this stuff out of the boat. You have to give up everything that you have. That's the only way that you live. You can't tell us it's free if the man's sitting there and saying, unless you give up everything that you have, how can you be my disciple? Where do you get free out of that? Where do you get, I don't have to do anything out of when the man tells you, you have to give up everything that you have? Doesn't make sense. He's giving you instructions of how to stay in the boat, how to live when you're inside of him. When he's being your ship, this is how you live. Get um, this is First Corinthians chapter six. It's First Corinthians chapter six. Give me verse nine. They tell us anything, and because we don't know the book and we haven't taken the time to understand the book for ourselves, we just believe it. That's going to be a free gift. How are we not going to have to do anything for it? And the man is telling us, you have to give it all up. He's telling us, you have to abide in me. What does abide in me mean? That means you have to keep my commandments. If you don't keep my commandments and you say you know me, you're a liar. I'm writing this to you so you don't sin. If you do sin, we have a propitiation. And not just for us, the whole world. But you got to keep the commandments. Keep going. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So the man told us already the kingdom of God is just like what? He said it's just like somebody found a field with treasure in it. And when they found it, they hid that thing. They're like, man, let me cover that thing up. Then they went to inquire how much it take to buy it. And they found that they're going to have to sell everything they have to buy the field. He said the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, is like somebody who had to sell everything they had to buy the field. Then he come back and he said, don't you know? What? Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. He said, don't you know? That unrighteous people won't inherit the kingdom. We already know what the kingdom was like. It was like somebody had to give it all up just to get it. But he say, unrighteous people ain't going to get it. Sound like they didn't give it all up. Let's see what they didn't give up. Be not deceived. Neither fornication or idolaters. They didn't give up fornication or they didn't give up idolatry. Nor adulterers. They didn't give up their adultery, cheating on their wives. Getting more than one wife. Get more than one wife. After a divorce. Right? You divorce one, try to get another one, adultery. Right? All right, same thing for the woman. You cheat on your husband or you try to get another one after your husband. That's adultery. All right? What are we going to do with it? I mean, I would love this here and tell you, well, no, I mean, if he did you wrong now, you know, just divorce him and go find you somebody that treats you right. I would love a lot of these, man, a lot of these women deserve to be treated. You see, man, you deserve a man that'll treat you right. I mean, technically. Right? I mean, if you wasn't married the first time, you would deserve somebody. Now your butt don't. Your, your butt either deserves to die or he deserves to die so that he can get remarried or you can get remarried. That's it. Other than that, you deserve to say you don't sit your butt down. Or reconcile yourself to your husband. Make it work. Figure it out. Right? We make these decisions. We choose to get married under God. You ain't got anybody forcing nobody to darn get married. Do what you want to do. You ain't going to be right. I don't even tell these people to get I just Listen, take care of your darn kids. That's the only, thing I, that's the only advice I give them. Take care of your darn kids. I ain't going to tell you to get married if you're going to do what you want to do anyway. And all every, for what? You right. Be boyfriend and girlfriend. That thing don't make sense to me anyway. No, nothing, nothing y'all do make darn sense. Do what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? What we gonna look at? I mean, what what else are we doing out here? What are we doing? This stuff has to make sense, right? If you if you commit adultery, if you're an a, a idolater, you're a fornicator. What else? Nor effeminate. All right, you can't be a homosexual. What else? 
nor abusers of themselves or mankind. Right? You can't be a homosexual. Right? These people got all types of weird stuff going on today. On college campuses, fighting, going back and forth. I was listening to a commencement, uh, uh, not a I don't know, is it a commencement speech when they do the graduation? Look, my at my little sister graduation, they talking about all types of gay stuff in there. To, he sound gay, I'm pretty sure he gay, you know what I'm saying, that was giving the speech. I'm just listening, it's like, this stuff is like, why is this even a topic? Like, why is this, why is this, why is this even mentioned? Right, why is this even a topic in a graduation? It doesn't make sense to me. This stuff has been thrusted to the forefront and forced all these little kids to think about this stuff and to try to deal with this stuff. It's wrong. It's absolutely wrong. And they have the nerves. If you got a white person, I feel honestly, in, on, on some levels, the white man get a bad ticket. They're everybody against the white man. You know what I'm saying? You got the white woman that's against the white man, the black man that's against the white man, the black woman that's against the white man, and every other race against the white man. The Mexicans against the white man. Everybody's against the white male. Only the white male. You know what I'm saying? They don't mess with that white male. They tell them white male, I mean, the white male dominate and do, do wrong against everybody. And they everybody had got his number, too. Yeah, I feel a little bad about the white, the white male, right? You know what I'm saying? But you look at it, everybody do it. If the white male, right, if a white male puts on a costume for Halloween, of an Indian, right? Just wears an Indian. He's an Indian for Halloween. You know what a lot of these people are going to say? That's culture appropriation. That's what they call it on the college campus. They say this is called culture appropriation or culture vulture, right? Because that's not your culture. And now you already subjugated these people to negative things. And now you're trying to benefit or look good or take peace of their culture. A white man raps, right? Eminem. He's criticized of being a culture vulture or, uh, a, or, or of doing culture appropriation. Same thing with Iggy Azalea, right? Same thing with all these white people who take on black culture or try to uh, cash out on our culture. They try to take off our culture and they do it. I agree with some of it, right? It's like, yeah, well, that's our stuff and y'all trying to take it, for sure. So, and these people fight hard for this stuff on college campuses. What they don't see, though, how is it not the same thing if a man then wants to portray himself as a woman? How is that not the same concept? Right? What are you going to say? Like, how, what's your defense to that? If I'm a white man and I want to, I don't know, if I'm, what's the, what's the, uh, what's the lady name who, who she claims, she, she told everybody she is black? Rachel. Mm. Rachel Dozel. 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 Right, if I'm Rachel Dozil and I'm telling everybody I'm black, got my perm my hair, make it nappy, you know what I'm saying? Got my blowout, put some tan on my face. Everybody think I'm black, just think I'm real light skinned. We all offended about that. That thing wrong, ain't it? I can't believe her. She ain't even black. We don't want her, right? I can't believe her. It's offensive. Fire her. We got her, but up out of here. That thing ain't make me that. That thing ain't bother me. It hit me one bit. I'm like, oh, makes sense. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? Makes sense to me. You know what I'm saying? I've been doing it for years. You know what I'm saying? Makes sense to me. You know what I'm saying? We got her butt up. I done got her fired. She was leading the NAACP in, uh, I think, in uh, Seattle, running that thing, doing some good work. You know what I'm saying? What night she a slouch? She doing some good work. Got her actually, butt up. Out of there. Actually helped people, though. Actually you know helped saying? people. Actually helped people. Bro, we got her. That's a culture vulture. She benefiting off our stuff, off our struggle. But she helped people though. No, no, no. She benefiting <laughs> Terrence. She's benefiting off our struggle. Yeah. She didn't. Her family didn't go through but this everybody stuff. Everybody else that benefited off our struggle don't help though. <laughs> but she's white, Terrence. <laughs> that's true. That's a culture. That's culture appropriation, Terrence. That's not right. How is that right? That's what they say. So tell me how it's different when uh, Bruce Jenner becomes a woman. He not appropriating the gender? Oh, that's cool. That's all fair game. Everybody celebrate that now. That's worse. You, he's not appropriating an entire gender? He's not getting the benefits of being a woman when he's a man? What's the difference? Well, see, sexuality is a social construct. Culture is not a social construct? You, people teach you, or is culture part of your DNA? Or does somebody teach you to be in a culture? You can make the case that people teach you to be a certain gender, right? 
And when I raise my son, act like a man. I'm gonna tell. I'm teaching him that. It ain't like he learned on it. It's not like he naturally says, hmm, I want to wear pants instead of a dress. Right? I, I admit it. I teach my son pants are for males and dresses are for females. I, that's, a, that's a taught concept. It's not something that's ingrained into us. So they make the case that sexuality, gender, is a social construct. Therefore, children or people should be able to choose what they identify with. So why can't Rachel choose what she want to identify with when it comes to race? Why is, why is she being criticized as a culture voter if that's the logic that you apply to gender that has biology attached to it? You can't attach, you can, you can attach the, the traditional, even though it's taught, the traditional role of a woman is taught, right? It is socially constructed. I'll give you that. It is taught. But you can attach the logic to how it is taught to biology. A woman has a child, therefore, the child is nursed by the woman biologically. She's birthed by the woman biologically. Therefore, the woman is the nurturer of that child. Typically, the woman stays home. The woman is these. You can look. That's, that's man-made tradition of how we handle it, but it's attached to biology how it makes sense. What can you attach to biology in terms of culture? Culture just based off of history. We've been through a few things. This is how we started to react. Right? Why is it different then? They can't answer that question. They're hypocrites. Absolute hypocrites. They're homosexuals that try to get away and push this narrative of our people. And we're so stupid, we just take it. We just take it. They dumb down all our people with this stuff. You can't throw a rock without hitting a homosexual nowadays. A lot of people ain't even real homosexual. It's just cool. Then they get a little older and they go back to what they were doing before. It's just cool for them now because it's on every single TV show. In every single movie, it's pushed that narrative. What's their defense? Because, you know, the homosexual is now the minority. I can tell you about a whole lot of mi minorities that's not in every single movie now. <laughs> they don't get a main role in every single TV show? Every TV, you, you can't name a TV show that don't have some element of homosexuality now, that, which is insane. Like, why? You cannot, you can't tell me that this is that big of the population that it has to be represented on every single television show? And you can tell, you look at the TV show like, this is absolutely forced. Like, they force these narratives in there. It's like, this doesn't even fit with what's going on here. You just force, it's like, it's ridiculous. Why? The whole nation going backwards. And just continue, started off backwards, and just continue just going backwards and backwards and backwards and backwards. I saw Bernie Sanders. These people love him some bunnies. I ain't never rock with him. You know what I'm saying? One of my friends tried to accuse me. You voted, you voted for Bernie. You don't cut that stuff. I didn't rock with him either. You know what I'm saying? I can see through his stuff there. He would have been better than some of the rest of them, but I ain't one of them people to say vote for the least, least evil of them. I don't vote for, I ain't voting for none of them. All of them some hypocrites. Bernie Sanders, he grilling the man. I don't care nothing about no Christian now, but he grilling the man. It's a Christian man that Trump trying to put in there. He grilling him. He's like, are you a Christian? He says, yes. So do you agree with what you wrote when you said that Muslims stand condemned because they don't accept Christ. He is like, sir, I am a Christian, and I wrote that from a religious standpoint, this, that, and other. Do you or do you not agree that uh, all Muslims are condemned? He was like, sir, he wouldn't say it. I would have stood on that thing. I would have stood on that thing, flat foot. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just said that thing. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, they are. They are condemned. Uh, I won't stop at Muslims. You, sir, do you do you believe in the Messiah? You are you are condemned as well. Is there anybody here that does not believe in the Messiah? You are all condemned. Thank you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what what you want me to say? That's what my belief is. That's the book. The man came back. He said, "I treat everybody with respect. I I um I I think everybody deserves a certain amount of respect." He said, "Another." He asked him, "Do you think it's respectful that they are all condemned?" I'd be like, uh, that's what God said, sir, and I believe him. Yes, they are all condemned. It wasn't you know my saying? decision. <laughs> yeah, you know I don't saying? make the rules. 
However, I do agree with the decision. I did not come up with it. Uh, I do, however, do treat them with respect still. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? I think it would have been the easy answer. But he grilled them. And then he told them. He told them, you know what? Because of your views, I don't think you belong in office. Now, there's laws on the book. Really, there's laws on the books that say that no, politi no political office should have what they call a litmus test. A religious litmus test. So that means you can't say because you're of a religion or whatever. But that's essentially what he did. Bet you ain't nobody going to talk about it. Nobody going to talk about this I bet stuff. Bernie Sanders a Christian dude. No, he, he a Jew. All right? All right, not a, no, let me get that right. He's Jewish, right? He practiced Judaism. He probably don't practice nothing. He practiced hypocrisy, right? Run a darn mouth. All right, but that's what we look at. These people attack anything that seems like it's right, and they push the narrative of all this stuff that seems wrong. Bernie Prince Bernie said, ain't never going to get a pass from me. You know what I'm saying? You're a hypocrite. Keep going. What else we got there? He said, don't mess with the effeminate, the abusers of mankind, abusers of themselves with mankind, rather. That means homosexual. You're a homosexual. Nor thieves, nor covetous. Don't be a thief. All right? You can't be coveted. I mean, you, you want what other people got to the point. You, you thinking about how you're going to get it in an illegal or, or a sinful manner. Nor drunkards. Nope. That means you can't get drunk. You can't get high. You can't get intoxicated. All this stuff. I don't care nothing about none of the stuff these people saying. No, I, got a, I got a prescription. Yeah, okay. I ain't, about to, I ain't about to judge you for your prescription. I'm going to tell you, though, you get high or drunk, you go into hell. You, you, may, you justify however you want to do it. Justify whatever you want. What about the people that got to go and they got to get surgery and they put them under with medication? I'm going to tell you this. You get high or drunk, your butt going <laughs> to hell. Does that mean they going to hell? I'm going to tell you this. You get high or drunk, you going to hell. They always trying to get some little scapegoat and try to try to make it, you know what I'm saying, make make themselves excused from something. Who are you trying to convince? Like, I'm going to stop you or make you go to hell. Ain't none of that thing my choice. I'm just relaying a darn message. All right? Your butt going to hell if you don't believe the book. If you don't walk in it. Whole time he's just trying to tell you, this is how you stay in the book. I mean, stay in the boat. Keep going. What else we got after being drunk? Nor revilers. Nor revilers. Nor extortioners. Nor extortioners. Shall inherit the kingdom of God. You can't inherit the kingdom of God with that. Did we skip something? No. Read it one more time. Let's go through all of them one more time. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators. Nor idolaters, mm -hmm. nor adulterers, mm -hmm. nor effeminates, mm -hmm. nor abusers of themselves with mankind, mm -hmm. nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. You're not getting in there. What else he say right after that? And such were some of you. He said some of y'all were such things. That's why the book say, I write this to you so that you sin not. However, if anybody do sin, we got an advocate. Messiah, the righteous. All right, we got an advocate. That's why he can tell them, y'all used to be some of this stuff. But what else? But you were washed. You were what? But you are washed. That means you were pruned. You started to produce some fruit. The Most High God got rid of some stuff. You had to lose some stuff. Keep going. But you are sanctified. Mm -hmm. But you are justified in the name of the Master, Yahushua, and by the Spirit of our God. You have to be sanctified and justified by the man. The only way that's going to happen is if you bear fruit. The only way you bear fruit is if you abide in them. The only way you abide in them is if you keep his commandments. It's the only way. If you don't keep the commandments and you say you know them, you're a liar. Right? If you don't abide in the doctrine and the teaching of Yahushua, you are a liar if you say you know the man. Right? Anybody come to you teaching something different? Don't even bid them. God speak. You just tell them bye. You know what I'm saying? Be like, all right, bye. Right? That's it. Don't invite them in the house. Bye. They trying to tell you something different from that? They trying to disagree with that and teach it to you? Right? Nah, you can't even. Nah, I'll tell you what. You uh, you good. You just go that way. Right? It's, it's some stuff we can disagree with. Right? You still coming out. We got this argument. They trying to tell you something different from that? 
They trying to tell you you can. I mean, you can just do whatever you want and still be saved. Nah, nah. I, look, I can't. You date. The book trying to tell you that person is dangerous. The book trying to tell you that person is dangerous. You just don't even have no conversation. Get them out of the house. You good. Get they butt out of there. Right? It's important that we understand these things. Right? It's important. Otherwise, people will start to confuse us. That's how we can see this homosexual on TV and some of our people start falling for this stuff. Right? And they start to push these narratives, these forced narratives in there. All these people are homosexuals. They just want us to be like them. They gay selves. Right? These Jew I mean, you see, uh, we talked about uh we talked about Bernie Sanders being Jewish. Another Jewish and a homosexual uh uh we were talking about him when we first got started. What was his name? Bill Maher. Bill Maher. He gay? That's what they say. I might be spreading the rumor. I don't know. I heard he was, though. I don't know if it's true. All right? I heard he is a homosexual, though. All right? But you look at I wouldn't put it past him. But if you if you look at he uh he recently, you know what I'm saying, caused a little bit of an uproar because he said that um, when asked, you know what I'm saying, I guess it was somebody on there, some senator or governor or something like that, um, talking to him. And it's like, I like, he asked, he talked to Bill Moore, and he was like, I'd like to invite you to come work in the field with us. You know what I'm saying? Just talking to him about some project that he had going on. He was like, I'd like to invite you to come work in the field with us. Completely innocent, whatever. So Bill Maher, he was like, he just saw the opportunity to make a joke. He was like, in the field? <laughs> in the field? He said, I'm a house N-word. I'm not working in no field. Right, that. Making a joke. But he used the word. So then, nobody flinched, first of all. You know what I'm saying? The dude that he said it to smiled. You know what I'm saying? Didn't flinch. You would think people would be like, ooh. You know what I'm saying? The whole crowd laughed, joked. All white people. All just laughed, joked. Nobody flinched. Nobody felt like, mm, that was over the line, this, that, another. So you look at it like, and then raise a whole lot of questions about everybody, right? Then, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the semi-backlash started to happen. You get, you get, uh, you get, you know what I'm saying, what they call black Black Twitter, they call it cocoa butter Twitter. <laughs> but you get black Twitter, you know what I'm saying? People on Twitter that's black or in the black community, they start look, homie need to be fired. But then you get certain people, like my man, used to be my man, Michael Eric Dyson, that defend him. Like he's not racist. You get other people like Killer Mike, you know what I'm saying? These are all people that, you know what I'm saying, black power, this, that, and the other. These are all people that Trump need to go, Trump is racist, all these different things. And they come to their boy, you know what I'm saying, who's a Democrat pushing for Hillary and all this stuff, and he's, he supports the cause of a black man. They come to his defense. Uh, Bill Maher done this. It just so happened these two people, there's others that came to his defense, but these two people, they happen to be on a show a lot. All of a sudden, they come to his defense. I know. This, that, another. I was like, man, y'all a mess, man. All these people are mad. They sell us out. All of them. All of them are sell us out. I don't trust not one of them. You know what I'm saying? I don't trust not one. All of them just talk slick. They they say some cool stuff. They make it seem like they on our side. And then they, they show their hypocrisy. I'm good. Bill Maher, your butt should be fired. Get them out of there. Right? We'll take Rachel. I'm good with Rachel. Get Bill Maher out of there. I'm trying to figure out how these same people who call Trump racist, who's never been called saying, I don't, I'm not saying Trump ain't racist. I have no doubt if, if he was, if, if he came out tomorrow and said the N-word and was caught on tape saying the N-word, it would not surprise me one bit. Nor did it surprise me when Bill Maher got caught saying it, right? I'm not saying none of these people ain't racist because I believe it's a, a high possibility that they are. Right. What I'm saying is once they've exposed themselves as such or exposed themselves doing something inappropriate, get their butt out of here. If we so quick to call Trump racist because we just believe he is right, just because he's rich, he's white and he's a Republican. And we quick to call him racist based off of no real evidence. Right. Why we can't get Bill Maher out of here? Why is that not a, a unified uproar with all the people? Why are people giving them excuses? Why are people saying, oh, I was talking to I was talking to somebody about it, and I was like, I, they asked me, how do I feel about it? I was like, I feel like he went over the line, right? He went too far. Disrespectful, period. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if he's racist or not. I don't care if he's not racist. It's disrespectful. Don't, don't do it. You know what I'm saying? Just 
It's like a, it's not it's not like a it's not even like a cracking request. You know what I'm saying? It's like like because of the history, don't say the word. Period. Like just don't say it. You know what I'm saying? Just don't. Period. You know what I'm saying? Not, I don't, for me, it's not, I don't think anybody should say it. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody say it. You a sinner if you say it. Period. You know what I'm saying? That's a proverb against our people. A byword against our people. Don't use the word. It's not, it's not a crazy request to me. So I'm looking at it just disrespectful. They, they reply to me. They start laughing. It's the same person that will run Trump to the ground any opportunity they get. Right? He's a racist. He don't do nothing for Black people don't care nothing about black people. This is before he got elected, during his election, they gonna do it after his election, right? Same person. So I'm looking at him like that's real interesting. So this man come out. There's another tape that came out with Bill Maher from like '91 of him. This one's even worse. This one nobody really noticed until this came up. There's another tape of him having the same type of conversation with. Well, he talked to a black lady this time, and Bill Maher talking to the black lady. And he's arguing with her. And he's saying they arguing about the use of the N-word. And he's like, I should be able to use the N-word. And she's like, no, you can't. And then the crowd, like, clapping for the man. He's like, he's like, it's in every rap song. It's in this. It's in that. This, that, and the other. Da, da, da. I, it, it means, he's telling her, it means something different now. You know what I'm saying? It means it's been taken from a word that has a lot of animus behind it. And now... It's a word that's used as endearment. He's teaching her about the N-word. You know what I'm saying? And she's looking at him like he's crazy. She's like, I think I'm the only one qualified to tell you what the N-word means to black people. You know what I'm saying? And so he's like, no, 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 no. And arguing with her, I'm like, this is the most ridiculous conversation I've ever heard in my life. Right? And at the very end of it, he says, he, uh, he starts using the word. He is like, it's, he just repeats, it's in every rap song. All you hear is inward, 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 just kept on saying it, saying it, saying it, trying to purposely, you could tell, to get under her skin. And she just lived it. And then he tells her, you, you, are you even, no, she, uh, uh, somebody, uh, he said something like, are you even black? Because she's like super light skinned. He's like, are you even black? He's like, I wouldn't know unless you told me. She's like, that doesn't matter. He's like, it doesn't matter. She's like, now my, my being black is determined by how my pigment of my skin you know what I'm saying? He, she's like, she's like, I have, I'm black. Like, it doesn't matter if you can tell I'm black or not. I told you I'm black, right? It's like, it doesn't matter how dark or light I am. I'm black. You know what I'm saying? And so he started arguing with her about that. I'm like, this is ridiculous. This thing, he should have been fired when that thing came out. But it's the hubris of these people, right? It is because they don't have any restraint. They don't have anything against them. And it's these same type of people that Christians will look at and be like, uh, I'm okay with him. And think it's funny. He's, I mean, he's a comedian. He makes jokes like that. Right? He makes jokes like that. It's okay. Let, 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 let these people make jokes like that about homosexuals. You see, if you notice, a lot of these comedians are not running their mouth about hom homosexuals like they used to. Right? They, they jokes about homosexuals. Them things are a little different now. You know, them things are a little more lighthearted. They don't play that stuff about homosexuals no more. Right? They got to make sure it's clear. Hey, I mean, you even Dave Chappelle, I, watched, I tried to watch Dave Chappelle's new uh, thing. He is like, hey, I mean, hey, you choose to, he made some homosexual joke. He made it clear. Hey, I mean, everybody, I don't have a problem. You do what you want with your life. This, that, another. I support it. You can't go too far with them homosexual jokes. Or you can still get away with some black jokes, though. They good on that. I'm just telling you, who the minorities? Who the real minorities? Right? Only the Hebrews, right? Only the, the so-called African-Americans, right? And they try to tell us, the Christians, who would support a lot of this madness and call themselves Christian and say that they followers of Christ and say that they going to heaven and say that, say that they, they, uh, they're going to be, you know, their grandmothers are angels right now. They, all of this, all of these people are going to be the ones that, that support it, all because they have the wrong doctrine, because they don't obey the book, because they have not given up everything. And they still hold on to this stuff thinking that it's a free gift for them. Grab Romans chapter 5. We'll get up out of here. It's Romans chapter 5. Verse 1. It's Romans chapter 5. Give me verse uh, 5.
Number five, you said? Yeah. No. Give me give me verse uh give me verse like uh Romans chapter five, give me verse uh give me verse twelve. Let me see what twelve say. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, mm -hmm. and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but uh -huh. sin is not imputed when there is no law. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned, after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who's, who is the figure of him that was to come. Mm -hmm. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. Is the what? But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. So he says, not as the offense, so also, this is where they get the free gift from. So that's a book. We can't pretend like free gift ain't written right there. It says exactly that, free gift. But now we have to understand, what is free gift? Is salvation a free gift? Right? Let's try to understand. Us making it into the kingdom. We already know from Yahushua that getting the kingdom is like, Somebody who had to sell everything just to buy it, right? For you to afford this, you had to sell everything you have to make a purchase of the kingdom. So how is that free, right? We have to ask the question, how is what Yahushua was saying a free gift? How is everything that we've been reading here that you have to forsake everything, you have to give up everything, how is that considered a free gift? So now we want to know, what is the free gift? So he said, not as the, the offense, is the free gift. So also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one man many be dead, much uh -huh. more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Yahushua the Messiah, has abounded unto many. He says the grace of God? Read that one more time for me. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the free gift by grace, which is by one man, Yahushua the Messiah, hath abounded unto many. The free gift by what? <laughs> by by grace, did you say? And the and the gift by grace, the which free, is by one man. The free gift? And the gift by grace, which is given by one man, Yahushua, has abounded So unto our many. free gift <laughs> is by grace. Right? The free gift is grace. Now let's go back to it. We should be pros at this. This is Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2 verse 11. Let's see what's given to us free. That's why we start off in the beginning. All right? And we let, we let the people know. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. So the grace of God, so the free gift is by grace, and then the grace brings salvation. All right? So salvation is not the free gift. The grace is the free gift, right? So the grace that brings salvation, what does it do for us? Has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness. It teaches us to deny ungodliness. And worldly lusts. And worldly lusts. We should live soberly. We should live soberly and what? Righteously. Righteously. And godly. And godly. In this present world. Right now. Right? That's free to us. It's free to be taught how to obey the book. It's free to be taught how to live within Yahushua. It's free to be taught to obey the commandments. It's free to be taught. The doctrine. That is the free gift. All this other stuff that they run in their mouth about, uh, you don't have to do anything. It just tells you the grace that brings salvation is uh, has appeared itself to all men. This is Yahushua, right? He's appeared himself to all men, right? Teaching us to deny ungodliness. That is grace, and that's the free gift. The book just told you. You can read it as many times as you want to, right? Romans chapter 5, read it as many times as you want to, you'll see that it's talking about grace, right? The gift that comes by grace, all right? That's the only way you look at it, right? You have to be able to obey and remain in the Messiah. 
The love of the Messiah has to constrain you. It has to keep you within the city of refuge, meaning the Messiah. If you step out of that, you ain't safe. Right? You are not safe. That's what we look at. That's why Paul, right? That's why the Most High God used Paul to paint this picture of the, of the Messiah. He's saying, if y'all get out of this boat, y'all but it done. So they stayed in the boat after that. All right? They stayed in the boat. Then they had to give up some stuff because the Messiah is telling us, you have to forsake everything. Right? He said the kingdom is like somebody who sold everything they had just to buy this one pearl or just to buy this field because they saw that it was worth all of this. Right? It was a good investment. That's the most high God is asking us to do is make a good investment. And before we make that investment, to make sure we know what we're getting into. Not everybody has to be a believer. Nobody, no, not everybody has to be a saint. Nobody has to, has to pretend like they believe the Bible. Believe what you want to believe. Don't let nobody bully you into believing something. You don't believe this book and that thing don't rock with you. Don't, don't try to act like, oh, well, I believe just because, you know, it's pressure and everybody believes the Bible, right? No, these people, don't be believing these people. Don't believe these people when they say they believe the Bible. They don't believe this Bible. They're just running their darn mouth. They got the same pressure that you feel. All right? Your family believe it. You don't want to be looked at a certain way. Of course, you know, this is technically still a Christian country. Da, 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 da. Don't, don't listen to these people. This country, would you be what you want to be? It's America. You hear me? You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't believe this stuff. Tell these people that you don't believe it. Tell these people, man, that Bible don't even make sense. It was written by men. You know what I'm saying? Say all that stuff. Say all of it. You get to say it to me, I'm going to prove you wrong. But that's all right, man. Just run your mouth. Run your mouth based off of what you know. Tell the truth. You know what I'm saying? But based off of what you know. If you think it's written, it's written by men and you can't rock with that, then cool. Because men did. You know, men did put it together. You know what I'm saying? You think books taken out of it? You know what I'm saying? Books were taken out of certain certain versions of, of the compilations and the, the canons, as they call them. You know what I'm saying? Books were taken out. That stuff is legit. You know what I'm saying? You feeling like, man, you know that thing. I can't rock with that. I can't do that. Just, you know, just do your thing. <laughs> ain't like they finna hunt down the books I was taking out trying to learn some more. Nah, they ain't gonna do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They ain't gonna try to figure out none of that stuff. Don't you care. know what I'm saying? They gonna sit there. He's looking for any excuse not to believe. And you got them. You got plenty of excuses not to believe. Just make sure if you decide to come this way that you ready, though. Make sure that you got what it takes to finish the race. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for people who got what it takes to finish the race. I'm not trying to hold hands for people who in and out and all that. You'll never, ever, ever see. There are people who come here and don't come. I don't, you won't catch me in anybody text messages or phone or anything like that begging them to come to Bible study. That doesn't make sense to me. You didn't have to, the, the man who found that field, he did not, nobody had to beg him to sell everything he had to buy that field. He saw that, he was like, that's mine, I need it. That's why I'm here. That thing don't nobody has to beg me to come to, to that's crazy to me. Right? Now, if you want to be here and you don't have a way to get here or you need help getting here, yeah, don't worry. I got the gas, man. Don't worry about it. I help you get here because it's worth it. I know it. If you if you struggling, man, I just I just don't have the means to get there, right? We'll make we can have Bible study at your house, right? We'll we'll accommodate. If you want to be here and you want to hear the word, we'll make an accommodation. But if you, you you just like, man, I don't really want to be here, and you just coming up with excuses of why you don't, listen, you, you don't have to give me not one excuse. Matter of fact, I won't even ask. You know what I'm saying? We good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Never ask why. Yeah. You, we we good. You come to Bible study, if if I even ask you that, I'm never going to follow up. You know what I'm saying? It's, we good. We all right. I'm following up with the people who want to be here. Right? You want to be here. Some, and some people watch in, right? Some people watch in, can't be here out of state or even in state and just can't be here. It's not convenient, kids, all this. I understand. And I, I know who y'all are. That's cool and everything good. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not stressing anybody, right? If you want it, we got it on video. The Most High God has gave us the means to make sure it's accessible to a lot of people, right? Not everybody, but to a lot of people. And if it's accessible to you and you choose to watch it, bless your heart. Hopefully the Most High God put something on your heart to cause you to live righteous and to, and to, and to, and to yield much fruit to him, right? But if it's not, don't feel the pressure. Do not feel the pressure. It's not, there shouldn't be any pressure. There's no sense of you starting something that you can't finish 
putting yourself through all these dire straits if you know that you can't do it. You might as well live it up, enjoy your life, because your butt going to be burned in hell for a really, really long time. It don't make no sense to stress yourself out about something you ain't even going to be able to keep up with anyway. You're going to mess around and start. You're going to give up later. So now you wasted five, six years of your life trying to be righteous. You know what I'm saying? Knowing that you wasn't going to be able to do it. And then, at the end of your life, you still going to end up going to hell. Don't waste, don't waste no time. If you don't have a mind to follow through and just do it, don't even waste your time. Just keep doing what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Reject it. Acknowledge it. Man, I, yeah, I think it was real, maybe, but I just, I just, just ain't for me. I'll leave you alone. Listen, you not going to be bothered by me a bit. All right? Your butt going to hell, though. Any question? All right, let's get up out of here. Let's pray out.